everybody. Welcome back to another episode of I Am I, number 161. My name persists in being Joshua Ansley. Uh, and today, you know, I wanted to start with hello everybody instead of hey guys, because uh, I wanted to try something different. But as I did it, I realized I'm saying hey guys, and uh, that could alienate some people. So maybe I'll make that shift. Can't guarantee it, but um, you know, hello everybody. Hello everybody. I've gotten, I feel like I've gotten a lot softer over the past three years, you know? Somebody said recently, they were like, I love your videos, particularly the funny or crazy stuff you used to do. And now I'm just like a dude who's like, hey man, don't be a dick. <laughs> I've kind of calmed down because all this went to like, hey, it's okay. I thought it was gonna get a lot weirder and I'm not sure if I got less weird or if maybe I'm just getting used to my weird necessity. My weird necessity. So I don't know, but I feel pretty like normal dude whatever the hell that means, normal. Anyway, let's get back to business. Going back to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, we've been kind of off of that for a bit, right? We went through the kleshas, the obstacles along the spiritual path, ignorance, fear, all that kind of stuff, the stuff that everybody has and nobody wants to admit they have. The mind does not want to admit it because the mind admits it that it means it has to give up sovereignty and has to mean that it's not in control and it doesn't want to do that, of course, naturally, right? So. It will feel restrictive because you think you are the mind, but it's really actually just restricting the mind and pointing the mind into a healthier direction. So it's uh, uh, ways of operating that, these are the, actually the yamas and the niyamas, so the next parts of it, the kleshas. But if we recognize we have those, those, uh, those kleshas and those obstacles, then we move into the yamas and the niyamas and we start to use the mind in a way that is actually gonna be more productive so that the mind is not running the show and that we actually are. So it's freeing, but at first it will feel like restrictive because we don't recognize that we are not the mind. That's the whole goal of it, right? So that's the first two steps, is the yamas and the niyamas, the do's and the don'ts, right? I don't like used to shoulds and should nots, like I've said, because it leads to shame, right? But it's just recognizing from a different perspective that these are ways that when we operate this way, when we operate in loving and caring and this, you know, these kinds of things, it helps us, right? So forgiveness is not something that is going to be limiting but it feels like no way i'm fucking forgiving him because we're not ready yet and that's okay but ultimately that space is actually what's emanating from us so moving into the third limb which is asana which is what most of us know yoga to be most of us have gotten into into yoga because of asana right this physical posture this pose right so western yoga particularly has become that it's become inundated with just postures and poses and how to, you know, this physical practice of something. And there's this whole understanding of physical versus spiritual and all this kind of stuff, which is basically this whole vlog anyway, so I'm not gonna go into that too much. But it is a beautiful part of the practice. I love asana, right? I love poses. I love getting all, you know, warrior two and feeling in my body and all this stuff because it is all absolutely connected. So it's a very powerful thing. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali what Patanjali is really talking about is one pose, the asana of sitting there in easy pose in a nice, long, meditative posture of seated posture, right? And with his method of yoga, which is not something that he created, it's just something that he coordinated and wrote down and, you know, kind of tried to bring together. And with his method, though, it's a method of self-realization. So it's a meditative understanding to get there. So the goal is to come into a meditative understanding and spend 17,000 hours in meditating, I'm joking. But, you know, to whatever it is, to be able to sit in that pose for a long time, the body needs to be prepared for that, be prepared for that. So traditionally it's thought of as all these other postures are building up strength and the ability to be able to sit there with a nice long spine, open channels and breath and be able to sit in that meditative place for a long time without having this comfort of the body come in and take us and distract us, right? So traditionally speaking, all he says about asana is stira sukham asanam, which is that it should be a strong and easy pose, generally translated simply as that, right? So a nice and strong and comfortable, easy pose. Now, that's again so that you could sit there in that place and have the stability and strength, yet a sense of ease, so you're not fighting to hold it there and being distracted by it with a sense of ease so you can flow nice and easy and start to use the mind and point into focus and all the other stuff that comes later. 
Taking it into a wider perspective of bringing that onto our mats, it's a really powerful thing to understand that strong but gentle, I, sh I shouldn't say but, strong and gentle, right? So this is really getting into moving out of black and white thinking. So in black and white thinking, which is really this rigid way of being, there's this or there's that, there's black and there's white, right? But as I've said many times before, the singularity includes the duality. Right? So this is including both of them, so it doesn't have to be just fighting to engage or releasing everything. So in our postures, right, it's not just like engage, it's not just simply that, it's where are we engaging, how much are we engaging, what, what is the, the nature of the engagement? The nature of the engagement is a sense of ease. So they're not, we're not pushing and fighting and triggering the body into some, some fight, flight or freeze or into some sort of struggle. It's to find sense of ease, right, in the posture while we're engaging. So that being said, if we take that off and we start to use that as a metaphor how to live emotionally in this life, that is an incredibly powerful thing to work with, to know how to move forward in this life with a sense of strength and confidence, but still flow, right? So it's sort of the earth and the water, earth and air. Let's use earth and air in this case, because the one place we really get that sense of flow and ease, particularly in our physical practice and the asana practice, is with the breath, right? So when we can move into that flow of the breath, and we can still have that strong steadiness, right? This is where we get into both those things, so that it's the yin and the yang. It's both of them working together. They're not against each other. They're working together, the masculine and the feminine working together, right? Not against each other. So it's moving into a sense of that understanding of the duality within you and coming to a sense of ease in that. And in our relationships, it's being able to hold space for other people. First of all, it's being able to hold space for ourselves. It's being, being able to hold space for the way that our mind works when, because what happens is we don't want to actually recognize the kleshas. We don't want to recognize how fucked up we really are. We don't want to recognize the darkness within ourselves. So we pretend that it's not there. We don't even know that we're doing that. We don't even know that we're doing that, right? It's, this is what's happening that we're not conscious of it because we're not aware of it. We're just in our rut, in our zone, and how we work and operate, and we're doing it mindlessly. When we start to become aware of that, that's why the whole is the idea is that everybody has these things, these glaciers. When we start to move into that darkness and understand it, then it suddenly it becomes about you being able to hold space for your own emotions, for your own darkness, for your own stuff that you have to work through, right? And that's then the space of that, where you can then hold space for other people, so that you can have your perspective and understand other people's perspective too. And it doesn't have to, now the black and white thinking is like, well, what about neo-Nazis and all that? No, we don't have to go that far with it. We're talking about having healthy relationships in your life, right? And understanding that with the person, the people that are close to you, right? Being, if they are not completely, totally fucked up, which we are, you know, that's the, where, where is that black and white thinking too? It's really to take it away from that. So we start to take responsibility for our own emotions in our relationships and start to work into an understanding of how to set healthy boundaries. Boundaries need to have this space too of like, how do we set this healthy, strong boundary, but have a sense of ease and when can we flow and when can we release our boundary, right? And not being allowing ourselves to be completely walked all over so that we're not manipulating and taking advantage of others, nor are we allowing ourselves to be manipulated and taken advantage of. So we can have an awareness of other people and see that, oh, like, well, because, you know, in a lot of the spiritual work, it was like, well, then they have to take responsibility for themselves. No, motherfucker, you still have to be aware of how this world is working. And if they're not strong enough to be able to understand their own boundaries, then you have to be aware of that, too. Even if for no other reason, it'll come back to bite you in the fucking ass, but maybe not because of it's coming back to bite you in the ass, but just because being a good fucking person, right? So, whoo, breathe, flow easy so being able to move into this way in an emotional life is to be able to be strong and and know who we are but still have a sense of ease and flow it's wearing life like a loose garment right so that our mind can function that way so it's like bruce lee you know be like water my friend it can flow or it can crash be like water and the mind to have a sense of flow in it right so that we're not rigid and stuck but we're not totally just malleable and being taken advantage of all the time. It's having them both. And it's a really powerful way of looking at life, looking at our emotions and our mental understanding of life. Right? So that really is also on the mat, a great way to approach it so that we're not pushing and fighting. It's a surrender. The, the, yam, the niyama right before this was Ishwara Pranidhana, which in case you don't remember, was surrender. 
and surrender. It doesn't matter what you're surrendering to. It's translated often as surrender to God. But really, and there's debate whether it's really a theistic thing or not. That's really the only theistic part of the, the sutras. But it doesn't matter whether it's a, it could just be a placeholder that you have to surrender, that the mind needs to surrender to something higher, whether it's a higher aspect of you or not, whatever that is. It's a surrender into a deeper strength with that sense of ease, right? So it's not pushing and fighting, it's allowing and softening, and it's a completely different way of living. The mind doesn't want to do that. The mind wants to control everything. It wants to be rigid and have it be exactly as it needs it to be and wants everybody else to operate exactly as they're supposed to operate. All right, but this is an awareness of how our system is operating with that sense of strength and stability to know ourselves. And it's only if we've done the work can we really even say that we've known ourselves and looked at this space. Not just be like, well, I don't, not at about, no, easy, easy. Breathe and hold space for yourself. Work through your shit so you can hold space for others. Strength and ease. And again, that comes from the breath. From surrendering into the flow and the ease of the breath. And as we stop fighting from that physical space, whether it be the body, and the mind, or whatever, to have control, we soften into a deeper strength than we could ever imagine. So, having those both operating at the same time, moving forward into the world from that place of strength and ease. Stira Sukham Asanam. Strength and flexibility. In Lakesha Lakin, I am you, you are me. Namaste. What? Too much?